Hi, Thomas Brinsko here, CEO and publisher of BIC Magazine and BICMagazine.com. Usually in my video updates, I'm bringing you top headlines from last week. Today, however, I'm excited to bring an announcement that BIC is celebrating 40 years of connecting people in business and industry. A special shout out to the founder of BIC, my business partner, and one of my heroes, Mr. Earl Hurd. We love you, Earl. So, our May-April print issue marks the beginning of the 40th year of publishing to our industry. We have an article layout in this issue which covers a lot of the milestones in BIC's history. I want you to take a look at that, but BIC is also very blessed to have a great partnership with a number of industry associations that use our communication services to get their messaging out to the industrial universe, including you. I'm going to share a few industry highlights from our current anniversary with you now, so get your hands on a copy of it for the full story. Or if you're not getting Big Magazine in print, all these articles are online. First, Rob Benedict at the American Fuel and Petrochemical Manufacturers contributes an article where he points out that contrary to popular thinking, in reality, plastics often are not only more affordable than non-plastic alternatives, but importantly, plastic is also responsible for less greenhouse gas emissions. He points out AFPM's position that plastics pollution can come to an end without hurting production. The key, he says, is the development of the circular economy where post-consumer plastic can be sustainably reused and recycled in new products. On a similar note, Hector Rivero of the Texas Chemistry Council and the Texas Chemistry Alliance provides insight into advanced recycling and how chemistry will help achieve that holy grail of the circular economy and sustainability. OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, contribute an article in this issue on the national safety stand down. Fatalities caused by falls continue to be a leading cause of death for construction employees and the stand down is designed to raise fall hazard awareness across the country in an effort to stop these fatalities. There's some great resources in that article about having a stand down at your own work site. Jay Cruz, the director of policy at the International Liquid Terminals Association, discusses how terminals are going to be critical to the developing hydrogen economy. He rightly says we're going to continue to need large supplies of oil and gas for the foreseeable future, but the world recognizes the potential for hydrogen and the terminal industry is ready to be part of it. Side note, in his article he talks how the DOE is making seven billion dollars available for uh, the use of clean hydrogen, including innovative, innovative uses in the industrial sector. The National Insulation Association likewise contributes an article about the cheapest and fastest way to make first advances towards greenhouse gas emission goals. They rightly point out that the cheapest form of energy is the energy you don't use in the first place. Insulation is all about the business of running more efficiently and, and reducing energy consumption, so it makes a lot of sense. Good friend of BIC Magazine, Chris Williams, the executive director of the VPPPA, writes a safety article for the magazine, this issue, regarding safety culture. He points out that every chain has a weak link. Identifying the weak link in your safety culture and strengthening that is the challenge of the day. Tony Bennett, the president and CEO of the Texas Association of Manufacturers, writes a great piece on why his association has already called on members of Congress to restore the expired research and development tax policies. Immediate R&D expensing, full capital expensing, and an interest deductibility rule should be priorities for America. We used to have these provisions, but they were allowed to expire. Tony points out that the Chinese government is pouring more resources than ever before into its innovation and that means the United States is in danger of losing high-wage jobs to overseas businesses without Congress's support. There's a lot of great features in editorial in this 40th anniversary issue, Bic. ExxonMobil completed its $230 million Baton Rouge refinery upgrade. Formosa Plastics is moving forward with a $9.4 billion petrochemical complex. We have a review of the API Summit, updates from the Port of Houston and ECMA, and I could go on and on but get the full stories at BicMagazine.com. Thanks again to you loyal readers, both print and online, and to our marketing partners, vendors, and staff for the privilege of serving you for 40 years. God bless, and I'll see you again soon.